she likes, what she likes And she could put it all on you, baby If you bout that life, bout that life Because you don't got time to choose it Hey tribe, it's Kia from Heritage 93, and a short time ago, my nails were in shambles just before cutting them to start over again. But by the next video, my nails seemed to be sprouting out faster than ever before. But that's because of previous filming done two months post nail chop for that one summer nail art tutorial. But there was one thing I did differently before growing my nails out this time. This is a nail hack type tutorial that I've been waiting to try out and bring to you guys now that the roast session is officially over with. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how I achieved long, strong nails again, pseudo style, with some plain old cornstarch and a cute and quick marble mani to go with it. Let's get started with the supplies. First, you'll need some assorted falsies to get that length back. I like the nail extensions that have a little dip in them and that come numbered so that it's easier to match them up later. Next, I'm grabbing my buffing block to lightly prep the ends of my nails for better adhesion with this nail glue that brings it all together. I used a generous amount of the glue for each nail, making sure that the entire dip of the falsy was covered with the glue. Ah, long claw key is back, but I ended up changing the shapes of my nails a few times in this video. So I'm taking my regular Schmeichler scissors to cut them down to become cat claw key. Now I'm ready to start the filling process with my base coat and the trusty cornstarch. I'm also grabbing a sheet of some not so sexy foil because things can get a little crazy and I need easy cleanup and workspace. This fan brush is also a key staple in making this process so much easier for me, especially since it's giving me broom, a dustpan, and a whole duster for the win. We love a versatile brush. So now I'll need to smooth out this gap to make this falsy and my actual factual nail flush. To do this, I'll apply one thin layer of the base coat to this bottom section of my natural nail only. Then I'm scooping up some cornstarch, sprinkling it in on, and giving it about 20 seconds to sit on top, and then dust it off before applying the second coat of base and repeating this process once more. I use two coats for this step and recommend waiting a few moments before dusting the cornstarch off each time so that it dries evenly and faster since there's cornstarch on top absorbing that base coat. Now that we're nice and flush, I'll be repeating this coating process four times over the entire nail. One coat at a time though. We don't need to be looking too crazy and taking longer than it needs to dry. Once I did the first coat on one nail, I had the other girls follow suit so everyone's on the same page and we don't waste time doing it one nail at a time. At this point, we've got little lumpy lobster looking nails, if lobsters had nails, but it's okay because now that the girls are thoroughly dry, all we gotta do is buff them back into formation. First with a coarse file to take the edge off, and then smooth the surface out with the softer buffer so that it feels nice and smooth. But because of the narrowing nonsense of these stiletto nails, even after four layers of the cornstarch, I wasn't hesitating to grab the scissors once again to cut off the pseudo girls down to a more deserving and manageable shape. Plus, who doesn't like to see nails go dramatically airborne, bounce backward, or casually slide off screen? Okay, okay, now that the girls are officially chopped into place, I'm going in with that coarse file again to make sure they're smooth and even with the one-way swipe. Now I'm gonna repeat the same process on the other hand. Make the base of the nail flush with two layers of cornstarch, each dried separately. Then layer the whole nail with four coats of cornstarch, each layer drying separately again. Thirdly, once the girls are dry, cutting them into formation with the showgirls. If you don't wait until they're completely dry, you might risk having lumpy nails that you'll have to buff smooth again. And for those of you guys wondering about using gel polish instead of the clear base coat, the gel polish I tested on my middle finger here has that nail cracking up before I could even finish this video. But that's because that gel polish generally cracks everything it touches. I'm not opposed to using gel top coats, I just haven't found one worthy enough to recommend to you guys. I just stuck with the base coat because it makes my life easier. 
So now to top things off, I'll be using the shade Well 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 from Sally Hansen's Color Therapy Collection I picked up some time ago to get the base coat right for this Marble Manny. Then I'm grabbing the super thin brush to mix this black acrylic paint and some water together. The key here is to mix several shades of gray. Maybe not 50, but you get the point. Dimension is what makes the difference between a marble design and a zebra pattern. So yes, let it flow girl. Let the paint be watered down to a light gray and then concentrate it to top with a richer black. Every nail is gonna be different, so just have fun with it. Lastly, to make it unquestionably marble, we're gonna kill that shine with a matte finish. This manicure lasted a little over three weeks before I had to retouch it again, but it was definitely solid and I was really happy with the lasting result too. Give this video a thumbs up if you wanna see how I retouched the new growth of these nails. This mani also had me breaking out the rose gold rings to give you guys the full effect, but I think any ring color would slay this style. So yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this testing the trend type tutorial and found it helpful. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and engaging. Take care and happy nail slaying. I'll see you in the next one.